hey, it's Joe Lines, and uh, I just wanted to demonstrate how lazy I am. So I, uh, I, I'm involved in a meetup group. It's for landlords, and uh, because of the COVID issues, we decided to have weekly meetings instead of monthly. And since we can't meet in person, I offered to use my Zoom meeting. Um, and so I, I. Each week, I get a list of people that have registered, and of course, it changes week to week, and I want to send a follow-up email to people that registered, not that they attended, just that they registered, with uh, links to the videos that we recorded, any uh, the chat file, any other files or anything, and so it's just a, you know, it's a little bit of a laborious process to import it each time, import the file, write an email. If I had to, I could put a, I could put the CC and Arab CC everybody, but, um, you know, one, it's not professional, and two, is it, it's, uh, it's just, hey, you know what? I can automate this. So let me walk through here. I'm using my Excel function library that um, I got in my library folder. Um, here is just a reminder. These are the things I need to update each time. Um, right here, um, I have a path to a, an, a CSV file. Let's go ahead and open that. I'll, I'll use site to open that so you can see what's in there. Um, it's, and this is this is the actual file I download from Zoom. Um, unfortunately, they, Zoom has an API, but they don't allow for grabbing this file via the API, which would have been amazing. But um, anyway, it's fine. So it downloads it, and it has some stuff in it. The approval and status, they're always going to be approved, and the date type down changes, which is kind of irrelevant. Um, this is just a stacked file with, with um, my family here. I put them in there uh, as some so to not give away uh, everyone else's email addresses. But you get the concept, right? It's just a common delimited file. Um, I need to open it into Excel. So um, in here in my file, I come in here, I got my reload in case something goes wrong, but I can, can hit Control I and it's gonna launch Excel. It's going to make it visible. It's going to use this multi-opener path, and it's going to um, open that CSV file path and return a pointer to Excel. Actually, I probably don't need this here, but I'm a, oh no, this is the freeze. Um, it just looks similar to something else. Um, so I freeze the first row after it gets opened. Um, and then I look, because I don't want the approval status, and I don't want registration time. So I look in columns A1 through F1, so I look in the header row. Anywhere you find these words, it's going to delete that column. It's a function I've built into my Excel library. Um, and then I go ahead and choose to set the width of everything in columns A through C to 15. Uh, I could have set a minus one, which is automatic, but some of these names are, are much wider than others. Um, so that is all uh, when I hit Control I. Let's go ahead and hit Control I and see what happens. So bam, opens it up, freeze. Notice I could scroll with three. Of course, it doesn't matter, but I usually have like 20 in here. Um, these all came out nice. The nice thing about this is some people I noticed, um, they when they entered their name, they put it, they somehow, even though it said first name, last name, they put it like this, right? So if it's a common file, it's gonna import like this. And so this allows me having it separate where I can import it. And then after this, I can go, oh, you know what? Yeah. Um, I can fix it, oops, let me just copy and paste. Now I can do whatever to it, right? Um, I can make that a little wider, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, now the second part, this is the part that I really like uh, in Excel, is, uh, so when I hit my other hotkey, you know what, let's, uh, let's move this here and put Excel here, there we go. And I think I can drag this over some and that'll adapt, there we go. So um, it gets a handle to the current version of Excel right here. Um, and then it goes through and looks at the header row. This is another function I wrote and it stores in this LOC. I think that's an object. Yeah. Um, it stores, um, where these headers are. So it'll store the location for email, it'll store the location for first name, it'll store the location for last name. So that way, if things ever move, I don't have to worry about it, right? It automatically gets updated. Um, and here I just had a message box, I can get rid of this, but it would actually show me the, the um, where they are. Uh, that's not needed anymore, that was during testing. Um, and then, this is another cool one. So this identifies the first row selected. So if I, if I select like these two, It'll get, it'll actually, this function here gets the first one and it loops through and it'll say, oh, there were two selections, start there. So what I really like about this um, approach is I can highlight, I can highlight one and hit my hotkey and it'll write that one email. Oh, I didn't reload it. Um, it had a pause there. I, let's see if it's still here. I had this pause here, um, but I realized, you know what, because I'm not deploying it and that's, I could have it deploy it, but I don't want to, right? I like to be able to, to look at them real quickly. Um, 
So now I can come here, hit this, and here's that email, and I can double check. Hey, is that hyperlink work? Does that one work? I really should click it, and let's make sure it pulls up. It pulled up on the other page. Here you can see it loading, great, okay. Um, I have my email, maybe we had a great call, maybe I'd wanted, maybe I put in the date or something. Um, here's the attached file, yeah, it's the right file. So I could hit send and this would deploy for me. Um, oh, and also notice it says, hi John, right? That's because I did a mail merge in here. So this is my HTML. Oh, let me let me keep going down the road here. So it, uh, it takes the first name and it title cases the first name in case they didn't uppercase their first name. Um, so it, it, it stores it in first name and then it creates an email object um, and attaches the file. And this is the path to that, um, the chat from the session. So, and I might have a couple other ones. So this is where I, I would come in here and probably just add another line. I duplicate this and add the other paths. I believe that works just fine to add one or two more. Right, I'm not going to have probably more than two, so I'm not worried about putting into an object and looping over them or something, uh, but I could. Uh, this is an important one here. I have, I think, like, I don't know, six or eight email accounts in Outlook, and um, I want it to come from a specific one. So here, this from account, this line here, that's what this does up here. I have from account is to Joe at the automator, right? This is where I could change it to like my Gmail or some other account and that makes sure it comes from that account. Otherwise it would just, if you don't specify it, it uses your default account. Um, here, I, this format, it says, hey, make an HTML email. Um, the email, who's it gonna go to? I'm setting it to the email address. That's what I've pulled from the file. Um, and then the subject, which is gonna be the same, but I could dynamically, if I wanted to put like their first name in here or something, I could. Um, and then this is the body, which is an HTML um, file. What, what, I, what you could do is like take this and go to a tool like this. No, this one, here we go. Um, now here, it would actually generate the HTML. I'm gonna do it reverse. Oh, come on. There we go. So you can see it here, right? And I could come in here and bold something and change colors. And then I could grab this HTML and, and but notice it, it actually, it's interesting. It dropped out the HTML at the beginning and end, which is fine. You just have to make sure you understand um, that you might need to make some tweaks, right? For this Outlook email, um, I have the, the tags beginning and ending with HTML, right? So those, and actually this, line break here, I, I don't need, there's no reason to have one there, because um, that's the end of the file. So I, I don't know why I have an extra one there, but um, you get the idea, right? Uh, it, it makes a nice looking, let me close this. Uh, let's do all three of these at the same time. And I can click anywhere, it doesn't matter. I'm clicking here, I can click anywhere, and this will write the three. Um, so here are my three, it was just fast. So there's the one to John. And there's to Johnny, great. I'm gonna close it, otherwise I can just deploy. Here's one to Kathy and Kathy. And there's the one to me, Joe and Joe. So um, now it's it's simple, I can hit a couple buttons, double check that the file is the way I want it and the name's the way I want it. And of course that the paths are proper. Um, and I'm done, I can hit send. Um, it, it's a nice easy way to be dynamic. The other really cool thing is, in Outlook, I'll have each one of these, you know, I'll have 20 emails pop up or I can do them one at a time, whatever I want, right? I can I can click on a couple, do those, then do the next couple and do those however I want it, right? I love how it inter interacts with the two. Um, but what's really cool is with this approach, I could, you know, if I had something to say to Kathy, um, when her email's here, I could, I can click in here and then I can write a note, um, you know, I can add a personal note and it's, everyone gets the vast majority of the same thing, but I can tweak it, right? So I really like this kind of approach. The other cool thing, I don't have it set up, but you could, uh, Mailgun allows for sending through Outlook. So if I wanted tracking on who clicked what, I could send this through Mailgun because it can actually, you can put in the SMTP servers for Outlook. It'll deploy through Mailgun and I could get a, um, I can see who opened, who clicked it, how many times they clicked it. It's, it's sometimes, you know, you want that kind of level of information. Um, the other option is I, I have a tool using the Mailgun API, which I could use that. In that one, I didn't have a way for it to attach files. And so I went this route for now, but I might update my other one to where I can attach a file. So anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. Cheers.